Hi, this is Lindsay Oden, Special Research Assistant at the Washington State Attorney General's Office, and this is your AGO Moment in History. In this series, our office will be releasing clips from our Oral History Project, an ongoing effort to collect and preserve the history of the Attorney General's Office as told by the people who have worked here over the years. In today's episode, former Deputy AGs Jeff Goltz and Shirley Batten interview former Attorney General Ken Eikenberry about his work before he came to the AGO, including his time with the FBI, as a prosecutor, and as a representative in Washington's legislature. In 1959, Eikenberry received his law degree from the University of Washington, and he became a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In 1962, he then became a deputy prosecuting attorney in King County. In 1970, he was elected to the Washington House of Representatives, where he served three terms. Let's take a listen. How you got to be a lawyer. So what what led you to be, become a lawyer in the first instance? Huh. <clears throat> well, I was working for a, a logging outfit in eastern Washington, and I knew darn well that I didn't want to do that <laughs> for a living. And um, I really did not know that I wanted to be an attorney, but I wanted to be, I knew that I wanted to be an attorney trained person. And as it turns out, that is exactly what I've done. And so you went to the University of Washington School of Law? I did. I went first to Washington State University, graduated in political science from that school, and into the Army for two years, uh, then to UW Law for the three-year term that they require, and then into the FBI for two and a half years. So what led you to the FBI? I mean, was that a common place, a common career path for young law graduates at the time? Well, it, we had been visited at the uh, law school by uh, two men from the Seattle office of the FBI. And I guess that's what got me interested. And uh, But it turned out to be an excellent experience. I'm really glad that I did it because, who knows, you might be uh, in the morning interviewing a person who's a prostitute. Yeah, then next would be the mayor of the of a city. And who knows... What the evening was like. And so were you based in Seattle or Washington, D.C., or a combination? After initial training in Washington, D.C. and Quantico, Virginia, uh, I was assigned to uh, San Diego, California, which was very lucky, I felt, yeah, because tough, it was a small tough duty. Yeah, it was a smaller office in the <laughs> great weather. And uh, the last few months were in Oklahoma City. And so how long were you with the FBI then? Uh, two and a half years. And then you came back to the Northwest? Uh, correct. I was, um, I just felt that they were so tightly supervised that it wasn't my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. And so I came back to Seattle and applied for a job as a deputy prosecuting attorney in mm-hmm. King County, Seattle. And uh, who is the, pro- the prosecutor then was? Uh, Charles O'Carroll. Yeah. And I think he... He did an excellent job as far as I'm concerned. Any memorable times in the in the office of the prosecuting attorney? Well, I guess perhaps the most memorable is that I met my wife there, and uh, eventually we became married, uh, Beverly and I, and uh, it was a shocking experience to be walking down the hallway and have her call on the, over the intercom that I should report to the front desk. <laughs> for for official business purposes, no doubt. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So then you were with the prosecutor for a few years then? I was. Um, and I, I said that working for uh, Mr. Carroll was a very uh, helpful experience for me because I remember one case uh, that I was charged with prosecuting in Superior Court of King County involving the rape of a woman who, um, and the defendant in that case, was a man who had been a very big contributor to my prosecuting attorney. And he was also a very prominent businessman there in Seattle. And the one Carol that, uh, the one question that Mr. Carroll put to me was, do you think you can win this case? And I said, yes, I do believe I can win this case. And he said, go. <laughs> So that was uh, that was my that stuck in my mind is uh, you've got to play it right straight down the middle, and that influenced your your role as attorney general in later life. 
it did. And as a matter of fact, I think you could probably find any number of people in the office who said, I, in regard to almost every question that would come up, I said, well, what is the law? Because that's what we decided to do. So after the prosecuting attorney's office, you went into private practice in Seattle? Uh, yes. Uh, I was in private practice for a few years, and uh, it was during that time that I ran for the legislature. Right. So what led you into, what led you into politics, running for the state legislature? <laughs> well, I had been involved as a precinct committee officer and as the member of an organization of young Republicans and became an op I became president of that group. But um, I was in my law office one day when a fellow came in and suggested that maybe I could earn some extra money. by, And I was, of course, accepted, uh, receptive, receptive to that idea. And uh, But his suggestion was that I run for the legislature. Well, <laughs> and that really took my life and changed it in that direction. And I had in mind at that time that uh, a cousin of mine uh, that I had grown up with in Wadatchee, Barbara Jarvis, had been killed in an auto accident, and that the person was the person who was driving the other car was charged with negligent homicide. And I personally knew the prosecuting attorney who presented the case. Of course, and I knew personally knew the defense lawyer in that case, and I also had practiced uh, and appeared before the judge that was handling the case. And there, I mention that because at the end of the state's presentation, uh, its initial prosecution, uh, the defense moved for dismissal on the grounds that the prima facie case had not been made out, and the court granted it, and. Uh, of course, I didn't like the result, but I had to agree that the judge was simply following the law. And so, and that prompted me to uh, run, among other, for many, among many other reasons, prompted me to run for the legislature to change the law in the state of Washington so that uh, a blood sample could be taken, so the breast sample could be taken from the defendant in a case like that, because I'm sure it would have changed the result in this case. So anyway, it took uh, several years in the legislature, but we finally got the law passed. And then, as Attorney General, by sheer coincidence, the very first Attorney General opinion that we issued, 1981-1, uh, I think is the number on it, uh, was to the Clark County prosecuting attorney telling him that this law was in effect, that it protected him from any civil liability in the particular case that he presented to me, and uh, someone else wrote the opinion. I need to give them credit, uh, but uh, I signed off on it, and uh, that was the first. It was that's how we closed the circle, uh, closed the loop on that one. It's interesting. So, so you were in the legislature for several terms, then three terms, okay. and then you went on to become chair of the state Republican Party. What Correct. Was, what was the, what was how was that different for you for you from the legislature? <laughs> well, it um, was certainly the same so far as uh, living with issues was concerned, mm -hmm. and it was the same in respect of uh, organizing and uh, getting people to agree to do things, although what I found was that you could get people to, in agreement to do one thing, and by the time you got back to the office, the agreement had come unglued. Yeah. So I learned to uh, be patient, and that was an important thing, too. It was interesting uh, how personal the legislative uh, races can become. Uh, you may be familiar with the story of how in 1976, I cho uh, chose to move over from my, put this in quotes, my safe seat, position number two, and challenge Helen Somers in position number one. 
and uh, only half my plan worked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the course of doorbelling, if I got into a conversation with someone at the uh, at the door, they would say uh, things like. Uh, Tell me now, why do you really? Why did you run against Helen? Because we like to vote for both of you. <laughs> and I, I took the lesson from that as being that if you're straightforward, that uh, people will tolerate a lot of uh, change from their ideology and still vote for you. She was well, well regarded. Yes. Yep, I think it makes a difference. Right, right. And so, uh, as Jeff mentioned, you were chair of the Republican Party before you ran for attorney general. How did that experience affect your campaign? Well, it was very helpful uh, to have been uh, Republican state chair because it meant that uh, every county that I went into uh, would have a core group of people who could arrange for appearances and arrange for dinners and, and that sort of thing. So it was a big help. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so later on you ran for governor? Yes, in 1991. Yes. And so how did your experience then as attorney general affect your campaign for governor? Well, I think I had developed some enemies. <laughs> 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 there was one man who uh, who uh, our, my Consumer Protection Division had accused of uh, false advertising, who came up with a big chunk of dough. He ran an independent campaign against me. And uh, the car dealers were not happy. <laughs> and so, but I made my own mistakes in that campaign, too. And uh, if I had it to do over again, I'd handle it a bit differently. Thanks for listening to this AGO Moment in History. Be sure to like and subscribe to receive updates when we upload a new episode. On our next episode, General Eikenberry discusses his transition into the AGO, how he managed the office, and the office's culture during his tenure. Thanks, and talk to you again soon.